We love the back squat and we love single leg squats, but which one should you be doing? Which one is actually better? We're gonna cover this and we're gonna start right now. So when we're talking about the back squat, we have to identify what exactly are we referring to before we dive deeper into this discussion of comparison, okay? So when we're discussing this, just for this circumstance, and I know on our main channel, we've shown you at least 30 different ways to squat. But for today's discussion, all we're gonna be doing is executing a high bar, full range of motion back squat. So I'm here, high bar in this position, full range of motion. So I'm gonna go here, set my abs. Oh, full range, as deep as you can get. One more. So that's what we're discussing when we're referring to the back squat in comparison to the single leg squat. Okay, so when we're talking about the single leg squat, and just let me clarify. This is a single leg squat. Okay, so we can load this with a barbell. And yes, again, on the main channel and on peak strength, we've shown you probably 30 different ways to do a single leg squat, but we've never demonstrated a Bulgarian split squat because no one from Bulgaria ever actually did the Bulgarian split squat back in the day. So please just call it single leg squat. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into this position where the bar is gonna be on our back in a high bar position, okay? So we're gonna be in this high bar position. We get set on our garage strength single leg pad and roller. We've got one leg forward. You're gonna have a slight lean of the trunk when you get down to that bottom position. So we're here. Let's say we do a double or a triple. My legs are tired from running eight miles this morning. Now, if I get on my right leg here, that's why I'm wearing my Kenya pants. I'm trying to channel my inner Kipchoge. So now I'm gonna get set here. And do three on this leg, right? Okay, so that would be a single leg squat. Now, I know I did them unbroken. You don't have to do them unbroken. You can go even heavier. You can stay a little bit lighter, but that's a single leg squat. We're gonna use a single leg roller, the pad. You're gonna get in position, have a slight forward lean, have that high bar position, and we're really gonna light up the glutes and the hamstrings. Now, which exercise is better, the back squat? with a single leg squat. So benefits, when we're looking at the back squat, okay, remember we're talking about the high bar back squat. What are some of the big time benefits? And I'm just, I have the visual right now of someone like Sam Mattis back squatting like 280 kilos. So right there, that's gonna tell you one of the big benefits is that the load can be extremely heavy. So when you have a large load on your back, that forces some type of mechanical tension. When that mechanical tension occurs, that forces your body to then adapt to that load. Now you go through myofibular hypertrophy and you get freaking stronger. And the other thing is, is that you're increasing your global strength tremendously. So that's gonna have a very good transfer to other big lifts. We know that high bar back squats are gonna improve pulling strength. We know that high bar back squats are gonna improve your clean, your snatch, your deadlift even to a point. So if we can think through that lens, we also know that the high bar back squat is going to improve our posterior chain strength. And because it's high bar and full range of motion, we're also gonna see some some development in the quads. Okay, so that's some of the big time benefits of that high bar back squat. It's also gonna transfer very well to explosiveness. We've even seen in research that it can improve your vertical jump and sprinting ability. So now, what are some of the downfalls? One, you can get extraordinarily sore muscular wise from a high bar back squat, especially if you haven't done it in a while. Two, it can actually fatigue your nervous system where for two to three days, you could be lagging just a little bit. You have to factor that into your overall programming and into your overall sports performance. So you have to recognize that aspect. It can be very, very fatiguing. And then three, it's going to lead to some types of stress that could potentially lead to issues if you're playing an open skilled sport. So let's say if I'm playing football and I hit a really heavy back squat on a Saturday and then I have practice on a Monday, it could, in theory, if it's not programmed accordingly, put me in a bad position on the field. But if we're programming things very well, that shouldn't happen. Now we have to look at what are the benefits, what are the downfalls of the single leg squat, and then on the backside, compare the goals of the two, and then recognize which one is actually the better lift. So single leg squats, what are we looking at when we're thinking about the benefits of a single leg squat? And the first big factor is that it's really, really hard 
to train absolute strength unilaterally. And this is an excellent movement. We've had athletes single leg squat over 500 pounds. Multiple athletes do this. So you can strengthen your legs and your posterior chain in a unilateral position with that single leg squat. Another big benefit, you're gonna have a tremendous training of that trunk control. Okay, that little bit of a forward lean is also gonna transfer over to acceleration. That's also gonna put a large amount of force and a large amount of tension mechanical load on your glutes and your hamstrings. So it's a really unique way to isolate, essentially isolate, I know it's a compound movement, but essentially to isolate those hamstrings and those glutes and really develop them long-term. Now, one of the big downfalls, when you first start doing single leg squats, you're also going to get extraordinarily sore. One of the other aspects though, that's not as big of a downfall is that you can recover from them a little bit quicker as far as your nervous system is concerned because the load will not be as high in relative proportion to the bilateral back squat. Now, another big downfall of the single leg squat is that if you don't have access to the garage strength single leg roller or the garage strength single leg pad, it can be very challenging inside of a gym, which is why you should go to garagestrength.com and pick one up today. So if you have that dialed in and you're able to set up a proper situation that is safe, it's really, really hard to find more downfalls for the single leg squat outside of, it's just gonna force you to be a little bit more sore and a little bit more fatigued muscular wise. Some people sometimes will have a little bit of knee soreness when they first start doing that single leg squat. And I think that one thing that they can do is focus on a slower and more controlled eccentric patterning. So go as controlled as possible. That can actually help with their knee soreness. And then two, change where that foot position is. Okay, so if that foot position moves a little bit more forward or a little bit more back, that can also alter that angle, which ideally will lead to less knee stress. And over a long period of time, that knee joint becomes more stable because you're training it in a manner that transfers a little bit better over to the field. So which one's actually better now? So it's going to come down to your freaking goals. What are your goals? So if I'm an athlete, right, and I'm training for a sport that is more open skilled, when you're in an open skilled sport, you're in unilateral positions way more. So in that case, it makes more sense to train with that high bar single leg squat. Now, that doesn't mean that you should be avoiding back squats, and I would even recommend using back squats for drop sets after single leg squats, or even using back squats early on in your programming. We do this inside of our app peak strength. We like to sit there and go, if we're trying to close a gap, and we've got an athlete who needs a peak in 16 weeks, how can we improve this open skilled athlete, a basketball player, a wrestler, a football player, lacrosse player, how can we improve them? And the big factor is we can use that high bar back squat to elicit that global strength early on. Okay, so we might do like five sets of seven high bar back squats. And then by the time that we get into the comprehension of the ascension phase, we're gonna switch over to the single leg squat because their sport is more focused on that unilateral position. Now, if we're someone who's a power lifter, I would even argue to a point shot putters, discus throwers. These athletes should be training with that higher load. These athletes should be focusing more on that high bar back squat, specifically because their goals are to improve with more load, okay? And that heavier load will drastically improve their overall global strength, which in turn will move to better movement patterns with power cleans, with full cleans, with snatches. So we've got to break that down and look at those specific goals. A good example would be a shot putter would train bilaterally heavy loaded versus a marathon runner who would train unilaterally with a lighter load. Okay, so that's where the single leg squat and the back squat differentiation has to be made. What are those goals? What are those adaptations? And then how are you going to do that as you work towards accomplishing that freak athlete status. And this is exactly what we do inside of Peak Strength. If you guys need help with differentiating between a back squat or a single leg squat, we want to give you an entire week of free training. So you can head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, you can download Peak Strength today. But when it comes back to the back squat, the single leg squat, both are absolutely freaking fantastic. Because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.